Hey everyone, for those that don't know me, I'm Kelly and I worship at Woven St Margaret's. So I'm really honoured to bring you the next few verses in our journey through Acts. So today I'm going to be reading from Acts 23 verses 6 to 11. If you want to grab a Bible, feel free to do so. If not, then just sit back, chill and listen. Here goes. Paul realised that some members of the High Council were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he shouted, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors, and I am on trial because my hope is in the resurrection of the dead. This divided the council, the Pharisees against the Sadducees. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection or angels or spirits. But the Pharisees believe in all of these. So there was a great uproar. Some of the teachers of the religious law who were Pharisees jumped up and began to argue forcefully. We see nothing wrong with him, they shouted. Perhaps a spirit or an angel spoke to him. As the conflict grew more violent, the commander was afraid that they would tear Paul apart. So he ordered his soldiers to go and rescue him by force and take him back to the fortress. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, Be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. So I'll bring you a few things that kind of stuck out to me. So Paul realised pretty quickly that the crowd was divided. You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't believe in the same things. So Paul knew that whatever he was going to say was going to be kind of tricky and wasn't going to go down well with the crowds, especially some of them. Now... I don't know about you, but I mean, Paul shouted, you know, brothers, I am a Pharisee. He didn't kind of shy away and whisper or even try and sort of go around the crowd and kind of take people to one side and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Pharisee. I'm, yeah, 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 you know, I'm the same as you guys. He stood up and he shouted. Now, that takes courage that takes complete and utter trust in your faith. That actually God knows the plan for you, that God knows that when you actually stand out and be bold and actually make a stand, then chances are we may face some kind of oppression. And that, that's difficult and that can be really hard and that can be really tricky. And I'm sure that most of us, you know, throughout our time, when we've really kind of had a situation where we thought, what, what do I do? Do I, do I say something? Do I not? Oh, do I kind of people please? Do I not? It can be really hard to, to actually stand up. But the difference is that, you know, us as Christians know that we must stand up. We must be bold that actually if we are going to share the good news of the resurrection and the hope of Jesus, it means actually standing out in our faith, standing up. That's not to say it's going to be easy. And Paul, you know, he, he did pretty well, to be fair. Probably did much better than what I would. But, you know, at the end of the day, we must stand up. We have to, because it's the only way that we are going to push through and we are going to change opinion and it might be hard and it might be difficult but if we stand firm within our faith and we put all of our trust in God then he's got our back simple as so the next thing that struck me really was that Paul's kind of clever because he kind of deflected the situation away from himself so he knew it was going to cause divide but then he kind of got the crowd arguing amongst themselves, which to be fair was pretty clever. So I kind of like I kind of like Paul's thinking for that, the way he did it. So you know, you've got to take your hat off to him, because he was still flipping brave to say and do what he had to do. So the next thing that really kind of struck me was when um the soldiers rescued him, took him back to the fortress. Paul would have been alone that night. He would have been chucked into the fortress. And 
I mean, who knows? But I'm sure he may have been thinking, oh, did I say the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Should I have done that? Should I not? Man, and I'm presuming there may have been doubt. Now, I don't know about you all, but, you know, there are certainly times of doubt. And it can be tricky. It can be hard where you actually think, did I say the right thing? What if I'd have said that? What, what if I do that different? Now, you know, Paul's human, the same as us, and that's natural. But what's really reassuring was that the Lord appeared to Paul in them times, in them times when he felt alone, when he was alone, when he may have doubted. The Lord came to him and said, Paul, be encouraged. Just as you've, you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. Now, to come, to have the Lord there, to give you that reassurance, to say, do you know what? Well done. It's nice. It is a nice feeling when someone says to us, you know, well done, and yeah, you did well. It's such a nice feeling. So for the Lord to appear to Paul and encourage him would have would have been it done so much to Paul's confidence. And you know what? What I love about God is that when we do step out, when we do trust him, and we take that little bit of step of faith and we get out of comfort, even though we might think, yeah, I've, I've done that, that's it now, I've stepped out and I'm not going to get asked to do anything again, which is sometimes what I do, to be fair. Like, I think, yeah, yeah, they're never going to ask me again. Then it happens. God uses that to encourage us and to build upon. He doesn't want us to kind of step out a bit and then that's it, your job's done. Yeah, he's pleased. But you know what? Be encouraged. Come on, step out a little bit more. Put your trust in me even more. Because you know what? If you can stand there in the face of oppression and stay true to me, then you know what? I've got your back. And he is our biggest encourager. And it's so nice to have the encouragement of other people. But you know what? Ultimately, when we're alone in them, you know, deep depths of the dark night, in our deepest and darkest thoughts, God is there and he has got our backs and he is our biggest cheerleader. And for that, we have to do our part. We can't just ignore what he wants us to do. We have to be like, Right, okay, God, this is going to be uncomfortable, but you know what? You're encouraging me, and I'm going to step out and do it. So, there are just a few thoughts that I got from that, guys, son and girls. So, um, I'm going to pray for us now. So, dear Lord, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you that, like Paul, you know, we can relate that you you use us and sometimes it's not comfortable lord it's not but that is when our faith is tested and that is when you have got us and we have to put our trust in you and you alone lord i pray for those that may be struggling struggling with stepping out lord give them the courage to be bold give them the courage to stand up and to praise your mighty name. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless, guys.